एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल गर्ल विद स्कैल्पल दिस इज डॉक्टर एम फॉर ऑल दोज हु हैव ऑलरेडी बीन फॉलोइंग मी आई हैड बीन शेयरिंग वीडियोज एज टू हाउ कैन यू बिकम अ लाइसेंस डेंटिस्ट और प्रैक्टिस एज एन इंटरनेशनल डेंटिस्ट इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स एंड टूडे वील बी स्टार्टिंग आप विद सम वॉट मोर ऑफ एन अकेडमिक टॉपिक दिस विल इंक्लूड the topics which are really important for dental boards be it the INBDEs be it the Canadian licensing exam be it the Australian Dental Council or be it the ORE you could utilize this material the study material which i will be presenting to you for your exams you can go through all the topics you can study with me and i hope that you achieve your goal very soon so let's begin so first topic would be on patient evaluation and risk assessment in medically compromised patients so this series would be wholly and solely dedicated to the medically compromised patient and how can a, a dentist can manage a medically compromised patient in a dental office and all the questions the topics which are related to that right so we will be discussing first today about a brief evaluation and about the risk assessment factors so Let's dive in into today's video but again guys don't forget to like share and subscribe to my YouTube channel click on the bell icon so you get an update whenever I upload a video and guys do share these topics with your friends your colleagues your juniors and seniors and uh, you know anyone who you think really requires these revisions and you know need to understand these topics so let's begin so the medical history is one which is a most important part which needs to be understood so a medical history must be taken for a, for every patient who receives a dental treatment we all know and the two basic techniques to obtain this medical history is first you have to interview a patient which is by the medical mode in which basically the interview questions the patient and then records a narrative of the patient's verbal responses on a blank sheet the second technique would be to use a questionnaire which the patient fills out Now the second technique is most commonly used in dental practices and it is more efficient and more convenient. There are many questions which are there in these electronic and hard copy versions of these questionnaires and dentists also even develop or modify these questionnaires to meet the specific needs of their individual practices. So let's dive in into what are the detailed information but before that I would like to discuss a brief summary about what are the potential questions which need to be understood first of all is the awareness as you can see here now it is just to be aware of the adverse outcomes that may occur in the management of the patient that is why awareness needs to be there which drug interactions are there what medicines are to be prescribed post any of these procedures which you have attempted and whether a patient is medically fit enough so that that patient can continue with the procedure right then is the patient evaluation and risk assessment which includes the review of the medical history and engage in direct discussion then to identify all the medications and the drugs which the patient is taken or supposed to be taken by the patient then is examine the patient for signs and symptoms of the disease and obtain the vital signs which mostly include the blood pressure the pulse the temperature then review the and obtain the lab test if at all which are required and obtain the medical consultation if at all you feel or if patient gives certain history which needs to be understood now the potential issues and the questions of the concern are firstly about the antibiotics that is will the patient need the antibiotics either prophylactically or therapeutically prophylactically for example if the patient is uh, somebody who has a history of uh, bacterial and endocarditis or if a patient had a history of mitral valve prolapse then that patient is actually required to be taken the antibiotics priorly to any treatment which is known as a prophylactic therapy then therapeutically for example if a patient came to you and you operated the patient the patient had uh, you know uh, a history of uh, infection and there was a pus discharge which was there in the situation therapeutically you need to give these antibiotics so this is the first thing which needs to be understood 
then it is if the current currently the patient is taking any antibiotics so that you don't double the dose and is there a patient who is at risk of the infection again very important then are the analgesics that is the patient taking aspirin or any other nasades which might increase the bleeding and will the analgesics be needed after the procedure then is the anesthesia that there are any potential problems or concern associated with the use of the doses of the local anesthetic or with the vasoconstrictors then is the anxiety that will the patient need need any sedatives or any anxiolytic medications then comes on to the bleeding that is it is an abnormal hemostasis a possibility this will only be checked by the history taking then is patient taking any medications that can affect the bleeding or after an invasive procedure then coming on to the breathing now breathing does the patient have any difficulty in breathing whether the patient is an asthmatic or is the breathing abnormally fast or slow then about very important the blood pressure which is well controlled and its likeliness to increase or decrease then coming on to the capacity to tolerate the care that does the patient have a sufficient functional that is cardiovascular emotional capacity to withstand these dental procedures some patients do get overwhelmed and you must be very familiar with the white collar syndrome then the chair positioning that is can the patient tolerate a supine chair position or is patient have experience with the rapid position change and any drugs taken by the patient or by administration or prescription by a dentist associated with any drug interaction any adverse effects which is again very important then any devices that whether a patient has any prosthetic or therapeutic devices that may require specific consideration for the management for example a pacemaker a defibrillator a av fistula then equipments are that are there any potential problems associated with the use of dental equipments or are the monitoring devices like the pulse oximeter carbon dioxide monitor or the bp measurement devices indicated for use then in case of emergencies are there any or there might be any anticipated or prevented by modifying any care uh, any of the medical urgencies which could appear or follow up that is is there any follow up care which is indicated and should be be contacted and the patient should be assessed with the response now we'll be discussing in detail about some of the you know uh, the diseases or the problems that the patient might be having before so how can you assess those let's see so coming on to firstly the cardiovascular diseases so patients with the various forms of cardiovascular diseases are especially vulnerable to the physical or emotional challenges that may be encountered during the dental treatment so first is the heart failure so it is not a disease per se but it is rather a clinical syndrome complex that results from an underlying cardiovascular problem such as a coronary heart disease or a hypertension so the underlying cause of the heart failure should be identified and its potential significance must be assessed now patient with untreated or symptomatic heart failure have increased risk of the myocardial infarction or it could be an acute heart failure or even sudden death now chair positions could also influence these things that is the ability to breathe and with some patients unable to tolerate the supine position also the vasoconstrictors okay pardon with my handwriting uh it should be avoided in certain circumstances for example if a patient is taken or has heart failure and patient is taking certain uh for example digoxin because the combination can precipitate arrhythmia so certain stress reduction protocols needs to be mi uh, the patients are at risk of reinfarctions arrhythmias so patients may may be taking medications such as anti anginals anti coagulants adrenergic blocking agents and channel calcium channel blockers now some of these drugs may alter the dental management of the patient and can act as potential potential interactions with the vasoconstrictor or even adverse effects 
then coming on to angina pectoris which is again a brief substernal pain angina is something which needs to be taken care of that is the patients would be having a variety of other medications which the patient might be taking like nitroglycerin beta adrenergic blocking agents calcium channel blockers and again stress reduction protocol which will be discussed eventually in other upcoming slides too then coming on to the high blood pressure again regarding the high blood pressure it should be identified in the history failure taking these medications can often cause elevated blood pressure and the signs and symptoms are associated with it are visual changes dizziness spontaneous nose bleeds headaches some antihypertensive medications such as non selective and beta adrenergic blocking agents may require caution in the use of these vasoconstrictors also co administration of calcium channel blockers with the macrolytic antibiotics for example the erythromycin or clarithromycin can cause excessive hypertension as well again an elective dental care should be deferred for patient who is suffering from high blood pressure then there is heart murmur again it's a turbulence heart murmur and uh, it may result in physiological factors or pathological abnormalities the presence of heart murmur may be significant in the dental patients because it may be indication for underlying heart disease the primary goal is to determine the nature of the heart murmur and also the american heart association recommended the antibiotic prophylaxis for many patients with these cardiovascular diseases in an effort to prevent the infective endocarditis so the current guidelines omit these recommendations on the basis of the accumulated scientific evidence also there is a mitral valve prolapse that is uh, the leaflets of these mitral valve or the balloon back into them and as a result the tight closure of leaflets can may not occur and this can result in leakage or the backflow of the blood not all the patients with the mitral valve prolapse have regurgitation but mostly patients do have okay now coming on to the rheumatic fever again it's an autoimmune condition that can you know follow up and respiratory you know beta hemolytic streptococcal infection which can lead to damage of these heart valve or causing a rheumatic heart disease then there are certain other diseases which involve the congenital heart disease the artificial heart valve then there's arrhythmia again vasoconstrictors in the local anesthesia should be given cautiously to the patients who are prone to arrhythmia because they may be precipitated by excessive quantities or inadvertent intravascular injections so stress reduction protocol is necessary then antiarrhythmic drugs can also cause adverse oral health changes and patients with atrial fibrillation may be taking anticoagulants or antiplatelets so patients with certain arrhythmias may require a pacemaker or even a defibrillator to regulate their their you know heart rhythm then coming on to the coronary artery bypass graft angioplasty or even a stent procedure So one of the more common forms of cardiovascular surgeries involve the cardio or the coronary artery bypass grafting also known as CAPG. So the grafted artery bypasses the occluded portion of the artery and these patients do not require antibiotic. Now another method of restoring the patency would be by the meaning of the balloon catheter which is also another procedure. So after placement of these stents and these procedures the patients are often described on one or more antiplatelets right and it de- decreases the risk of blood clots associated with the stents and therefore increases the risk of the surgical procedures so these patients need to be evaluated and if at all if it is not required which is according to the new guidelines that is we they do not require any antibiotic prophylaxis but the bleeding tendency is obviously risen then hematological disorders which include hemophilia which is an inherited bleeding disorder it can be hemophilia a hemophilia b or von willi brand's disease also known as the hemophilia c and these patients must be identified and managed with cooperation with the physician also these patients with these deficiencies may require factor replacement before the invasive procedure as well as an aggressive post op measure 
then they are blood transfusion now you have to take care about the hep b hep c hiv these markers need to be evaluated in case of blood transfusion right then coming on to anemia again it is very important because it reduces the uh the oxygen carrying capacity of the red blood cells are assessed and if a patient is anemic obviously that has been hampered and some patients might have the g6pd deficiency which is a glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase even sickle's disease which is more common in africa and uh, it can cause certain oral lesions infections even delayed wound healing then leukemia and lymphoma are also certain factors which need to be evaluated now patients who are taking these blood thinners a very important topic of discussion now, this is obviously of a concern especially for a surgical treatment so additionally questioning or certain screen lab tests need to be evaluated depending upon whether a patient is taking an anticoagulant or the patient is taking an anti medic anti platelet medication we'll be discussing about each and every topic in detail in the upcoming videos so this is just the briefing and again i would like to tell you that i have taken all the discussion and the study material it is totally taken up from the book by little and phallus it is the management of the medically compromised patient in dental office and the link to who buy this book would be available in the description from the amazon you can buy the book from there and i must say guys it is a really important book because many many topics come up from the medical emergencies and medically compromised patients and this topic needs to be you know revised thoroughly then coming on to certain neurological disorders like a stroke or the cva in this case also anticoagulant medications and antiplatelets are there and stress reduction protocols and anxiety reduction protocols need to be taken also patient who are suffer who have suffered from stroke may have residual paralysis speech impairment and calcified erythromatous plaques may also be seen in their carotid arteries on the panoramic films and the presence of these lesions may be a risk so a physician's referral is necessary again epilepsy ap- epileptics and patients with seizures and convulsions a brief history of these epilepsy and grand mal seizures should be identified the degree of seizure and the specific triggers of seizures now this can include certain odors or maybe some bright lights the medications are used to control these seizures so for example uh, gingival overgrowth may be you know recognized for a patient who has been on a uh, dilantin medicine and uh, phenytoin <laughs> and the patients should discontinue these anticonvulsant medications but they shouldn't basically discontinue this and uh, if at all it is possible to change these medications and patients should always consult their physicians and before even operating you should make sure that for epileptics you should give uh, the medications which are necessary so that they don't get into a seizure during the procedure or in post op situations then behavioral disorders and psychiatric treatments so uh this information should be told and should be absolutely verified now some psychiatric drugs have potential to interact with the vasoconstrictors in the local anesthesia and even they can cause xerostomia so the other drug adverse effects could be dystonia or tardive dyskinesia and it can complicate the procedures then certain uh, gi disorders like stomach ulcers or colitis that is the gi disorders that is if a patient with history of colitis or with colitis may not be able to take certain antibiotics so many antibiotics can cause a severe form of colitis uh, for example metronidazole and so the drugs needs to be you know tapered or changed according to the history then coming on to the respiratory disorders which could include certain allergies for example a patient might be allergic to latex and um, alternative materials like a uh, vinyl or a powderless glove or a vinyl dam material should be used then dentist should procure this history of allergy 
and uh, they can have certain other allergies like itching or tricharia rash swelling wheezing angioedema runny nose and uh, isolated signs could be nausea vomiting and even fainting so these these needs to be kept on check then asthmatic patients that is for these again stress is a very important precipitating factor so stress reduction protocol is very important apart from that patients generally use albuterol inhalers for their treatment and you should keep these inhalers handy so that if any emergency situation occurs you can use these up. again i am telling you we'll be discussing about each and every topic in detail today we'll be discussing just briefly about what history should be taken and what are the problems which patients are mostly associated with so respiratory diseases these are pretty common with people so for the other is emphysema or even chronic bronchitis especially the ones who smoke so the use of medications or procedures which can further depress these respiratory disorders or can dry or irritate this airway it should be avoided chair position is a very important factor in these patients and some patients may not able be able to tolerate supine position again a rubber dam it may not be tolerated well because it can choke a patient also the use of high flow oxygen should be avoided in these patients with severe diseases again there is tuberculosis a positive tb history if at all it is there it should be reevaluated and a diagnosis of active tb is made by certain chest radiographs sputum culture and a patient who has a latent tb and who are at increased risk of developing active disease may be placed on chemo prophylaxis as a preventive measure and medical treatment of this disease include the use of multiple medications and even a physician's consent sometimes then patients with osa or uh, the obstructive sleep apnea are at increased risk of hypertension mi stroke car crashes symptoms and signs like loud snoring excessive daytime sleeplessness and witnessing the breath cessation during breathing they should be evaluated Now the gold standard of for the treatment of this positive pressure airway can, however, be many patients cannot tolerate this modality, and other treatments needs to be taken. Then there are certain other diseases like arthritis and uh, prosthetic joint, which they might have artificial joints, or a patient may be endocrine diseases like diabetes or maybe a thyroid disease we'll be discussing about each of these in details in upcoming videos then certain you know sexually transmitted diseases also the other thing are the habits so it will include the smoking then tobacco addiction right so based upon these histories we can evaluate if so for example if a person who is a drug addict or substance abuser there is a very high possibility that the patient might be suffering from hep b or hep c or hiv or aids or infective endocarditis because of the sharing of the needles and uh, iv drug abuse or if a person a person who is you know consu- increased consumption of tobacco or has a tobacco pouch or excessively smoking if there's a lesion in their mouth which you've evaluated then there is a very high possibility of a tumorous growth over there which needs to be taken care of apart from that patient might be on certain steroids for any of the diseases so with the steroid therapy again care has to be taken up and uh, the stress has to be reduced and if at all any of these steroids if required should be given beforehand and should be tapered post the procedure then coming on to the physical examination again which is very important now physical examination consists of the general appearance the general appearance is basically careful observation and it can lead to awareness and recognition of any abnormal or normal features which could be there so uh, a survey was con- consists of an assessment of general body appearance for example the skin the nails the face the nose and the visually accessible areas may demonstrate the peculiarities of the underlying systemic diseases as well 
uh, for example uh, of uh, uh, the examples of possible troubles are a wasted uh, appearance a lethargic appearance then an ill kept dirty clothing spotty odors staggering or halting gait uh, extreme thinness or obesity these are certain signs which you should see then coming on to the nails as you can see here that is the clubbing of the fingers or the digits are there and the skin is the largest organ and the changes in the skin and the nails are associated with many systemic diseases for example cyanosis can indicate you know cardiac and pulmonary insufficiency then there is uh, the clubbing of the digits and may be associated with the again cardiopulmonary insufficiency then alteration in the finger nails for example clubbing uh white discoloration cirrhosis yellowing malignancy uh splinter hemorrhages for example in infective endocarditis then uh, bcc on the dorsum of the hands and the ala of the nose then again the dorsal surfaces of the hands are the common sites for actinic keratosis and the basal cell carcinoma then coming on to the face which is the facial symmetry as you can see in this image this facial asymmetry can be an indication for acromegaly then eyes which should be taken unchecked for example if a patient is suffering from you know high cholesterol they can have xanthoma over their eyes and uh, there can be bulging of eyes which is a sign of um, uh the emixedema or uh, it could be hyperthyroidism or uh, it could be uh, xanthoma which is the hypercholesteremia or it could be a lid retraction that is a you know a characteristic lid retraction which is there in hyperthyroidism then there is a, a swelling in the neck which can be a sign of goiter which is quite prevalent here and uh, a bimanual palpation of the anterior neck is necessary for any of the lymph nodes are there now the vital signs are there which needs to be checked so for example uh, the pulse pressure blood pressure respiratory rate temperature height and weight these should be checked as soon as a patient enters and it should be evaluated before any procedure needs to be evaluated now this again chart is very important to be and it is to be remembered that is it is the bp classification now this chart is quite readily available and i have given even the link Uh, this image is taken from the book by little and phallus an excellent book you should buy and purchase that book and you know study it by heart so that you have deep knowledge about all the medical emergencies and all the situations which could occur then coming on to certain other procedures or the methods which needs to be taken care of one thing here is the airway or we should rather say the assessment or the risk assessment so basically the classification before you evaluate any patient to go in for further general anesthesia any procedures which involves ga the asa should be evaluated so asa is a classification by the american society of anesthesiologists it's a physical classification system for assessing the medical risk So, if a patient is ASA one, it's a normal, healthy patient. If it's ASA two, patient is with mild systemic disease, like mild smoker and asthmatic, well controlled hypertension, and even pregnancy. Then ASA three is with the severe systemic disease, and these conditions may limit daily activity and probably impact the anesthesia. So, you need to taper the substances or the drugs which would be used during the procedure. Then ASA type four is a severe systemic condition which could be life threatening. For example, a recent stroke, or it could be an MI. So serious limitation of the daily activity, and will impact the anesthesia. Then type five is a category of the moribund patient and not expected to survive without the procedure. And the six is the declared brain dead whose organs are removed for the donor purpose. Then coming on to one thing which I had been discussing quite often, and that was the stress reduction protocol. So the stress reduction protocol is the key. if for example if the patient's history is uh self explanatory patient doesn't have any issues but the patient is anxious or if patient is somebody who is a diabetic or if somebody who's an asthmatic basically if a 
if patient has a medical condition and stress might be a condition which might trigger then these are stress reduction protocols which needs to be followed the first of all is open communication with the patient second is shorter appointments preferably in the morning then pre op sedations for example short acting di- di- benzodiazepines like triazolam should be given one hour before the appointment or a night before too then intra op sedation then profound local anesthesia or use topical anesthesia before for example if you are going for a surgical extraction and if a patient is really anxious then you should give a topical anesthetic so that the patient doesn't feel that prick and doesn't become anxious adequate op- operative and post op basically peri operative pain control measures and should be contacted in the evening after the procedure right so these are certain protocols which needs to be discussed so this was all in brief uh, about the evaluation of the patient i have discussed everything very briefly because all the topics would be discovered discussed in the upcoming videos i hope you like the topic i hope you will be following the topic with me all through this guys i'm creating these videos just for you so that i could help you out in each and every possible way this video and the, these topics can be studied by everyone anyone in this whole world who's appearing for the dental boards be the be the fourth year dental grads be the international grads who want to crack uh, the INBDEs the, this topic is very very important for especially those who are appearing for their uh, dental board exams in Canadian association this is very important for the Australian dental council again an important topic for the ORE and even those who are appearing for the examination in the middle east as well these topics are really important you can go through these topics listen to my videos and i've taken all the study material and taken all these pictures and the due credits goes to the authors that is by little and fallus the book is the link would be given in the description box i'm sorry i'm fumbling so this brings me to the end of today's video i hope you liked it do like share subscribe